Hi, every, hi everybody, we're back. It's day three here at Dell Storage Forum. We're in Boston and we're live. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's production of Dell Storage Forum 12 and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. This is day three for us. This is the second year we've done the Dell Storage Forum and we've been witnessing the transformation of Dell from essentially a box maker into a company that owns its own intellectual property. It has put a major emphasis on storage and data center and including uh, servers and storage and networking. We've heard from all three of those groups today uh, or this week uh, and we'll hear more from, from customers and other experts today. Um, some news, Stu, uh, on Dell. Uh, Dell announced uh, this morning that uh, in a conference call that Michael Dell had with analysts, Wall Street analysts, that uh, the company's going to pay a dividend and um, stock's actually you know, up pre-market on that news. Uh, we've got the open now, so uh, I don't know what the current price is, but uh, it was up early this morning. <clears throat> and so, Michael Dell told the analysts that he's gonna, they're going to increasing, the first thing he said is we're going to cut $2 billion of costs uh, over the next three years, and we're going to focus increasingly, he said, on the data center, uh, with a particular emphasis on um, gear, hardware, storage, networking, and servers, and a secondary focus on software and services. And um, as I say, they also announced a dividend of 32 cents a share, and uh, the closing price yesterday was uh, just under 12 bucks. Yeah, Dave, it's interesting. At breakfast this morning, I was talking to a Dell customer and a Dell partner, um, and they, they were disappointed with Wall Street. They said, you know, Dell's really kind of turned themselves around, they're more profitable, they're growing, and, you know, we're kind of, we were talking about the dividend and said, you know, when are they going to get a little bump on that? So, you know, if they've got good growth potential, as you've pointed out, uh, all these products that they're adding in the data center have better margins than they had in the PC and server era. Yeah, so the stock's up uh, almost 4% today on that news. You know, Dell's a, it's obviously an interesting company. Uh, you know, a lot of Wall Street, I think, Wall Street analysts are, don't understand the company, frankly. They see Dell as a, a box seller with a name on the box. And, uh, and while that is, is true for much of the company's business, um, I'd say a couple things. One is, Dell always differentiated with its supply chain and its, and its distribution channel, its an ability to, to have a customer experience that differentiated it from the competition. Now, of course, I understand why the street is paying less attention to that in the post-PC era, but Dell is transforming into a company that owns a lot of its own IP. Stu, the, the company's a $60 billion company and its valuation is around, just hovers over $20 billion. And so, uh, and it's got $14 billion of cash in the bank. So, in theory, Dell could buy back the remaining shares outstanding and essentially own the entire company. So it's got, you know, I think a lot of upside from that standpoint. The stock, you know, if, if they do aggressive buybacks, uh, the, the, the stock could, could go up. I mean, like I say, 14 billion in cash. You know, if you take, net out the cash, they're talking about, talking about $6 billion in value for a $60 billion company. You know, personally, I think that's undervalued to the extent that Dell can continue its transformation. Yeah, so, so Dave, the other thing, we had Carter George's keynote this morning, and we kicked off our broadcast on day one with Carter, uh, and what he talked to us about is Dell really creating that, that storage personality. So, uh, really an interesting way as to how Dell does acquisitions. They don't just acquire them and try to grow them, but they're putting together those building blocks, understanding those software components that weave together the entire solution, and uh, really, you know, Dell's got a compelling message. They're hitting all the notes that we expect. Uh, they've got, a, you know, a, a flash, message uh, that, that they went into a little bit of depth on. Uh, you know, obviously on the server side, Dell's been doing Flash for a number of years, but from the storage side, starting to see uh, that, that bridge to the server and the storage together, uh, what they're calling Project Hermes, uh, and the, the new term they came up to was the, the, their NVM, their non-volatile memory, where they can create a, uh, a shared global coherent cache between the servers, uh, and this is based off of the RNA Networks acquisition that they made just a year ago, and if you, if you look at it, uh, I, he, Carter said you can even take a single server and you could just fill that up with Flash 
and that could be really an appliance then that could serve up Flash uh, you know, at the server to, to a number of other servers. So what's happening here is we're seeing a total evolution of the, the I.O. hierarchy and I.O. design. 20 years ago, all the action was at the server. Uh, and really the server vendors were largely in control. The server was the, t the, the single point of control. Function over the last 20 years has migrated away from the host to the other side of the channel, out to the disk array. Why? for practical reasons of being able to share data, being able to protect data, things like snapshots, things like replication, uh, and other capabilities that we've seen go out to the array, and then the array became uh, the single point of control for all those functions, and there's of course a lot of processing power in the array, as you well know, Stu, and so now we're seeing with the advent of of Flash, and the difference is that Flash is a persistent media, right? I mean, you've got to have a persistent media, and that, that media has been spinning disk for you know, 50 years. Now we have this advent of Flash, driven by the consumer electronics trend, really driven by Apple's choice to use Flash in its iPods, and then of course all its other consumer devices, has really driven the cost of Flash down. So the enterprise has done some very sort of unnatural acts to make Flash enterprise ready, and what that's done is it's, it's allowed the, the price gap between memory, you know, non-volatile memory, if you will, and spinning disk to, to compress. And now we're seeing a migration of function back to the other side of the channel, and we're seeing that hierarchy of Flash really get granular. It started with enterprise Flash drives stuffed into arrays, but of course the uh, array controller became the bottleneck, and so you're seeing p people put PCI E cards you know, directly on the server. You're seeing Fusion I.O. do things like atomic writes directly to its product, and then EMC comes out with VF Cache. Now Dell has an opportunity, according to Nick Allen yesterday, to leapfrog that whole vision of what EMC put forth as VF Cache. So Stu, the interesting thing to me is you're seeing the whales not wait. They're all jumping in, um, I say all. Well, particular now, we've seen EMC make moves. Uh, we certainly heard IBM last week talk about its uh, Blue Hawk, which is a Thunder-like product. And now Dell, using its RNA virtualized memory technology combined with Flash to really put forth the vision of a shared global cache coherent capability that it wants to integrate across all of its products. Yeah, no, D Dave, absolutely. And another area we, we've seen a strong focus on and talked about the keynote, uh, Aperture's CTO came on uh, and, and talked about how uh, they're really able to use the, the snapshotting uh, technology to have both a, a crash and application uh, consistency, uh, and that, that's going to extend to the flash cache. Uh, so whether you have the storage in the server or whether you have it down in the storage array, uh, they're going to have that application awareness and be able to recover. Uh, as a, They kind of joked and they said that the joke's always been, backup's easy, recovery's hard. Uh, now Dell's looking to make uh, recovery simple. Well, as my friend Fred Moore would say, backup is one thing, recovery is everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so uh, we're seeing Dell really try to push the integration. Integration is non-trivial, Stu, as you know, I used to work at EMC, and I always felt that, that in watching EMC, integration sometimes got put on the back burner in, in favor of execution of the individual portfolio products. You're seeing a totally different message from Dell where integration is front and center. Um, at the same time, again, it's not trivial to do that integration. It takes a long time. We heard yesterday that it's going to take another year for, the, for Dell to get block-based compression. Uh, from Oak Arena into the Equalogic and Compellent arrays. I, I took IBM two years to do that with Storewise, so it clearly is not a trivial exercise. But So we're going to be talking about all this stuff today. we got another full day. Uh, keep it right there. We have Randy Kearns coming up next. Randy is a senior strategist at the Evaluator Group. The Evaluator Group, for those of you who don't know, is a, a Colorado-based uh, consultancy. They do a lot of both technical research and business research, one of the sharpest consultancies around. Randy is uh, a real expert in storage, been around the business for a long time. We're going to get his perspective, so keep it right there. We'll be right back, live. This is theCUBE from Dell Storage Forum in Boston. Keep it right there. <laughs>